Now you find disputes all across uh, the different, the various fields of evolutionary biology, right? Mm -hmm. um, whether you're in popular ge population genetics or you're looking at anatomy, there are lots of disputes. Now let's deal with the core ideas here. The first thing is that natural selection is being challenged by some evolutionary biologists by a totally different paradigm. So for example, we have James Shapiro, and again, not a religious scientist by any measure. And he believes that we can challenge Darwinism and have an alternative. And he thinks that is evolution by natural genetic engineering. Right. We have Eva Jablanka. She believes we can challenge Darwinism by neo-Lamarckism. We have people like uh, Masatoshi Nai from Japan. He wants to challenge Darwinism and he wants to replace it with neo mutations. Now, what's very important about Masatoshi Nai is he says Darwin has become into a god in biology. Like you can't yeah. challenge him, and the fee and um, Darwinism has become into a type of dogma. So yes. he doesn't believe that all of these stories which are told about it and all of these, you know, the, the efficacy of it that he it doesn't add up. Likewise, Lynn Margulis, who also who I mentioned earlier, you know, she, and we're going to get into this later. Yeah. She said, look, history is going to judge these neo-Darwinists as a Anglo-Saxon sect. She actually said this, right? Well, and she's not the only biologist saying that Darwinism is not just a scientific theory, it's become into a dogma, it's become into a religious worldview. In evolutionary psychology, you know, they tried to give a Darwinian explanation for why men like the color blue and women like the color red. Right. So they said, oh, you know, in the, in the ancient time when we used to live in hunter-gatherer societies, men that had a, 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 a genetic mutation which made them like the color blue were more likely to survive. Why? Because when they go to the watering hole, it's blue. Um, when they, they, they see a clear sky is blue so they're interacting with the color blue so they're more likely to survive and enhance their fitness women are cutting meat foraging picking berries and apples so they de they're dealing more with the color red so the ones who have a mutation for a preference of the color red are more likely to survive so they came up with this sophisticated hypothesis right oh. sounds kind of interesting then the, then comes along this uh, atheist philosopher right and he says what on earth are you guys talking about? <laughs> Firstly, this idea that men like the color blue and women like the color red is a very Eurocentric way of looking at the world because this isn't true universally. Mm. Secondly, 150 years ago during the Victorian era, in the good old days, men used to like the color red and women used to like the color blue. It was actually the opposite about 150 years ago. Wow. So this story is, is a just so story. So some evolutionary biologists, they wanted to challenge these Darwinian stories, these fairy tales, so they started labeling them just so stories. And that was mm. such a powerful name for them that it's actually stuck around. So even in, it's actually become into an academic term now, this idea mm. of just so stories. And uh, this just goes to show you how, how fiery the disputes actually are when it comes to the Darwinian explanations that they try and give us uh, for whether it's color preference, behavior, or even sometimes anatomy. If you enjoyed this video and everything else that One Path does and would like to see us produce more content, then please support us. Go to www.onepathnetwork.com. You can support us from as little as $1 a day. Much love and appreciation, and may Allah bless you all.